So, Cristiana, th thanks a lot, and um, I am very happy. We are very happy to guest you. And uh, um, so, th thanks a lot. Cristiana Barbatelli was my professor at the International Master in uh, uh, Relationship with uh, China and this country in uh, Macerata University 10 years ago. And uh, she was my mentor, and uh, actually, she's my uh, mentor and uh, professor. Um, th thanks a lot, Cristiana. We are very happy to, to guest you. And uh, let me transfer the microphone to Hugo for a short introduction. <clears throat> thanks a lot, Professor. It is a pleasure for me to introduce you to Professor Cristiana Barbatelli. Professor Cristiana Barbatelli is founder and CEO and managing director at Barbatelli and Partners in Shanghai. Professor Cristiana Barbatelli completed her academic studies at Ca' Foscari University of Venice and Milan State University. She is in China for since about 34 years and she had dealt with small and medium-sized enterprises operating first in the banking sector and then in management consultancy. She has directed projects on behalf of the IFC, the ATB, and the European community. And she is consultant for more than 300 small and medium-sized Italian companies involved in China development projects. She is a unique independent director with a foreign nationality at the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. And she teaches at the University of Macerata Faculty of Communication Science. She was uh, also founding faculty member of BIC, which is business in China, that is, is uh, a management training course on China by uh, ISPI Bocconi. She is also a visiting lecturer in Tor Vergata, Rome, Faculty of Economics, and at the University of Macerata, Faculty of Political Sciences, where she teaches business management in China. She also taught in Zhao Tong University, Shanghai, Chair of Creative Management, and she also uh, teaches for the Executive MBA Zhao Tong University and Vancouver University. Today, she covers, among other things, the Chair of Marketing Management at the Institute of Economics and Finance of the Shanghai Normal University. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to leave the floor to Professor Cristiana Barbatelli for her lecture. Thank you very much. Fulvio, thank okay. you. Thank you very much for overlooking, right. correcting, and, and fine-tuning my presentation. And uh, thank you for your beautiful English, because you sound so British. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> and thank you for the incredible presentation. I couldn't even recognize myself in your words. It's very nice. And, you know, yes, I've been in China for many, many years. That is uh, true. I am in Shanghai at the moment. This is my office in Shanghai. And um, as I was telling just briefly before starting this class, I was uh, back at work on February 13. And since that date, we have been doing almost a normal type of activities every day. So when we started back, when the Chinese government allowed us to go back to the office, there was a very rigid kind of protocol that we had to follow every day. And sanitization, for example, was something that we had to do every two hours. We had to measure our temperature in the office and also at the entrance of the building. And so we had to register all this data, these numerical data like temperature and so on and so forth, in order to let the eventual authorities to come and check on us. We got a couple of checks at the beginning and then after that, actually the situation had improved and slowly, slowly we are back to normal. We are getting back to normal at the moment. Um, we are living in a quite quasi normal way, uh, definitely in certain places. I just want to tell, uh, and also I see that there is some uh, Chinese students or something, but uh, only if you go into restaurants, for example, public uh, spaces, which are closed, then you will have to show uh, what it is, this uh, famous QR code, which is an application, which is not on trackability, but is on where you have been for the last uh, 30 days or 15 days. The green code allows you to go and check into uh, other places, hotels, restaurants, and certain shops where they still ask you to show it. Um, we, got, we got used with this in, in no problem and no time. We just did it. So um, I want to tell this to my colleagues and everybody who's listening to me. 
who is still in Italy at the beginning, let's say, or the revamping or the reviving of a normal life. There is nothing that human being can get used to. It. We can get used to it. everything, we adapt to everything, and we learn everything. And our memory is so incredibly short that when the crisis will be over, we will not remember the way we felt during the crisis. I want to tell you, to all of you, I want to tell you that there is always hope, especially for you, you are all young, and some months have been lost, but they are not being lost on your life. They have been actually uh, giving you much more experience, much more in-depth kind of feeling, consideration, and a lot of uh, thoughts and dreams and hopes that you have been definitely maturing and developing during this crisis. So I, with this wish, I start to tell you what is the world and where is the world going? If it's the world is changing, all the world is not changing. Um, my best wish is also to Professor Apolloni, and thank you also for thinking about me. Uh, Andrea Apolloni is a fantastic man. He's not only a very, very valuable and precious professor, and they're devoted to his researches and studies, but he's a marvelous uh, human being. We have been spending many times also together in, in, in China. We, we met also in Beijing, we met in Shanghai, in his uh, frequent uh, trips to China. So he's another very, uh, very deep expert of China business. So thank you, Andrea Polloni. Yes, you were my student and now you are my boss. So that's very nice. This is a circle of, this is a cycle of life here. Yeah? And then I think that uh, having a person like you uh, among my ex-students makes me very, very proud. Something good, you know, a little seed made a nice flower. So I'm very proud of that too. Let's go to ourselves. Sorry, I'm going to put on my, my glasses because I don't see anything, you know, I'm, I'm quite aged. And so, so it's very funny, but it's true. Um, let's look at Italy and China. I'm, I'm, I, I want to talk about how the world was, how the world is, and how the world will be. So it's, will our world change? What will happen after COVID-19? What has uh, happened here? What has happened in Italy and is happening in Italy? And what presumably we can forecast for the next few months, a few years to come? Uh, Italy and China this year were celebrating the uh, 50 years of bilateral uh, diplomatic relationship. On the 7th of July of 1970, Italy was the first European country to recognize it again, uh, People's Republic of China, and restated uh, their diplomatic relationship with, uh, with the People's Republic of China. At the time, differently from what people think, was not the Italian Communist Party was pushing for this, but it was the Italian Democratic Christians. Actually, it was Mr. Fanfani who was pushing for repristinating the relationship long due with People's Republic of China. In a year like this, a year where cultural relationship between the two countries should be celebrated, eventually we had this enormous crisis. So it is a pity, unfortunately, we will not see any celebrations for restating this important relationship. But maybe something will change again and maybe we will also uh, benefit from a restated kind of trust and knowledge between the two countries. One year, more than one year ago, uh, one year and three months ago, in March of 2019, due to the effort of the Under Secretary of State, Professor Michele Geraci, and due also to the effort of the Italian government, Italy under, under signed uh, as the first country in Europe again an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, with the People's Republic of China about uh, cooperating from the famous project which goes with the name of uh, OVAL or BRI. China has been doing an enormous effort in the last few years in order to create a, a sort of a network made of communications, made of exchanges, made of uh, local financing to support local economies, in order to expand over the Silk Road what it could be 
considered a new kind of uh, relationship with foreign countries from China to Europe and all the countries in between. Italy was the first uh, European country who signed uh, an MOU, a letter of intent, an intention to be actively cooperating with China in this project. After the signature, which was uh, criticized, as you might be aware of, internally in Italy by other parties, uh, political parties, and also externally by other countries and government of other countries who have been summoning Italy for doing this, which was seen as a real bold kind of uh, uh, step forward into favoring China. Uh, Italy eventually became a little bit shy. In August of last year, the party which was uh, sort of ruling the majority at the government lost uh, control over the Italian uh, government and a new alliance took over. So in that period, the MOU with China was put in a, no more on the number one agenda, but it was put on another agenda. I don't want to say that uh, the newcomers uh, didn't want to go ahead with MOU with China, but I think that there was something else on their agenda. There were new equilibriums to be reshaped and, and so on and so forth. During the end of the, before the end of the year, few um, um, important episodes happened actually in between China and Italy. About the fact that we had in uh, November a fantastic Salone del Mobile, for whoever is not informed, is an uh, Italian furniture saloni where all the gota of the design and furniture of Italy was present uh, in Shanghai. Uh, big time, I would say, fantastic show, fantastic exhibition, hundreds of thousands of visitors, hundreds of uh, agreements signed. Uh, we saw a sort of reviving of the two countries' um, agreements in a way which was much more factual, much real. Uh, let's work together for design issues because China is interested in doing this, so let's bring our design to to China and do something together. But unfortunately, the year ended with uh, some sort of a negative echo. Um, at the beginning of uh, the, this year, we started to hear about uh, this uh, strange pulmonary disease, which was going around in a part of China, in Hubei uh, province. And we didn't, also us here in Shanghai, we didn't really value, and we didn't pay attention to this. We just took it like, okay, that it could be a little, uh, epidemics kind of crisis, but they will be controlled and so on and so forth. This crisis became what you see now, what you have been experiencing now. I don't know where you are, but every country has been touched, so that's it. And that's where we are today. And so what happened eventually in this last month in the relationship between the two countries? But definitely uh, we had a very harsh reaction when the pandemic started to show its real size when we decided not to let, uh, and this was Italian government decision, not to let direct flights from China land in Italian airports any longer. Maybe you have been distracted then, but until two weeks before, uh, actually Italy and China, just to celebrate the, uh, the, the, the pristination of diplomatic relationship, had been promoting and adding flights to land both in China and in Italy in order to increase the possibility of communicating uh, with a ma major number of airplanes added every day and every week. All of a sudden, there is no airplanes flying between the two countries. This is, I, I want to remind you this because I want to remind also the Chinese colleagues which are listening to this that um, we have been really good friends. Our, countries have been always interacting very actively and we were doing beautiful things. Unfortunately, for now, I would say, maybe temporarily, uh, this beautiful cooperation will be stopped. Then, uh, the two sides realized, and this was this, uh, the protocol which was signed, the huge potential of the Belt and Road Initiative 
which could be then the potential because you you remember uh, when the MOU was signed we were talking about not only interacting with the, uh, the BRI so the Belt and Road Initiative but also starting to structure up a European transportation network because uh, we need it and we need still now to be much more um, active and uh, much more efficient and effective in order to let uh, not only our human beings and our people to access uh, China and vice versa to access uh, countries of Europe, but also and mostly lo under a logistic point of view, we wanted and we want to develop something much more effective, which could help to um, the companies, the business the, in the two countries to exchange goods products and service in a much more effective way. I do want to see that when we signed this uh, MOU, uh, the spirit of the signature MOU was absolutely in favor of enhancing this possibility between the two countries or making it even more fast, more effective in order to help not only the Italian companies which are in China investing, but also a, pos a possible and potential investment from China government or China in industrial um, units and operation in our country. But, there is always a but. We should have celebrated this year, 7 of July, 1970, but we will not celebrate, at least as far as we can see now, we can celebrate only with Zoom conferences like we are doing at the moment. And, um, we, I collected some numbers, and these numbers come also from uh, certain sources. Uh, I have to thank here the European House of Ambrosetti, which gave me these uh, uh, some, some numbers. Uh, we will have possibly a, a GDP decrease in Italy equal to the possible estimate is minus 8.5% this year. China possibly will close with a minus, uh, uh, with uh, a GDP still maybe positive, but maybe not more than 2%. And these are estimates which I cannot control now. We will have to, to wait and maybe see after September how all uh, both countries' industry are reacting. Um, one of the, uh, this is of course, uh, we will have also a lot of uh, bad situations for companies, both in China and in Italy. Same estimates from European House of Ambrosetti says that possibly 17% of stress enterprises will not make it and they will have to close down. Uh, we are looking at the moment in what is happening in this country and I can tell you that uh, definitely some minor companies, especially in certain fields like, uh, for example, textile or uh, simple mechanical, um, processing are closing down uh, here as well as uh, all over uh, the world uh, and especially also in Italy uh, one of the industrial sectors which has been uh, the mostly hit is uh, uh, hotel uh, restaurants and catering industry uh, only uh, every month uh, only in Shanghai we monitor the fact that at least 50 to 60 restaurants of the ones that we know and not the Chinese ones, so let's say, which are populating the whole town, are closing down. Uh, many hotels are closed down. For example, hotels uh, like Four Seasons or one part of the Sheraton or big names like this. This industry has been hit very, very badly, and uh, we don't foresee any sort of revamping in this industry for at least another eight, nine months. This is very, very tough to say, and it's uh, very sad also to consider, but it will be like that. Possibly in Italy, we will have the same kind of stressful situation. We will see now, I, I know now that uh, more or less, more, most part of uh, factories have reopened, Many shops will not reopen, many restaurants possibly will not make it. And uh, I read with a lot of pleasure the fact that eventually if you go on holidays and you stay in an hotel for the summer, you can get some money from the Italian government. The Chinese government didn't do this, but it's definitely pushing on a very um, strong way for the commercial emphasizing of buying and purchasing. For example, uh, the the weekend, the first May weekend, was expanded to five days. So normally, this normally is only two days. 
but in order to push for Chinese consumer to go out or to maybe have uh, dine in restaurants or going visiting during the long weekend, some touristic spots, they expanded the holidays to five days. Yesterday was, for example, another day, uh, all of a sudden commercially pushed, artificially pushed, it was the uh, 20th of May, which has been transformed overnight into another Valentine Day for couples. So uh, in Chinese, uh, the number Wu, which is five, and 20, when you read 520, you read 520, which sounds like uh, Wu Arling, and which sounds very similar to Wu Arling, which means I love you. And so these kind of initiatives might make you, know, you smile and laugh, but eventually are all um, pushes from the government to repristinate trust in the market from the consumers. Um, a good amount of companies will take advantage, we were saying also, of the fact, a year in China, and then speaking about uh, Italian companies, of the fact that uh, definitely the relationship between uh, China and the USA are readily strained during this period. So European companies are seen at the moment in a very, um, uh, as a, like a, a positive kind of partners to China economy. And at the same time, instead, we saw when this was already starting uh, the second half of last year, a, a, a quite an amount of uh, American companies withdrawing uh, from China business and trying to substitute uh, the supply chain which they had constituted in China in the previous 10 years and 20 years with, with other countries. For example, uh, the alternative now research for is Vietnam compared with uh, China before, or Thailand, which have been offering uh, their capabilities in order to absorb what before was uh, um, built and manufactured in China. This situation will possibly go on, uh, will go on until the end of the year, because as we know, um, the USA presidential campaign will possibly block uh, a much more serene and a return to normality. Uh, of the relationship between the two countries, uh, the United States and uh, China. But uh, we are Italians, and uh, the Italian companies, although they move in during this period, what they really did during this period. Let's go into much more details. Uh, you cannot travel in China. Still now, uh, you can go by car in the areas, I am in Shanghai, but I can go maybe by car in the areas in the great, what we call the Greater Shanghai, like Jiangsu province and Zhejiang province, but uh, if you fly to Beijing, you need to have a test made, and plus you risk not to be hosted in any hotel, as well as in Guangzhou, we heard the same thing. So you cannot travel physically. And um, the international business has been decreasing uh, practically is equal to zero since March 28, when China decided to close the borders to any sort of business traveler and foreign traveler, even uh, holding a, a proper uh, residence visa, which means within is in, without, we stay out for a while. What about other two countries? Are still communicating or not? How do we talk? I think that Italy and China might find uh, some uh, re reciprocal benefits uh, and uh, some good elements and po positive elements in which they can cooperate after this phase. Uh, for example, we will be possibly the best, uh, if not the only one, but we will be one of the best partners for China use of the new communication, for example, the application of technologies like the 5G. We have been discussing with China since many months about that. And it, we will be possibly uh, the partners for the development of the 5G in Europe. And this will be definitely increasing our potential as uh, communicators to China and not only as a best ally to when it comes to communications. On the other side, China, which is becoming uh, also through uh, this uh, Belt and Road Initiative, one of the biggest uh, financers in the world. We, we never look at China as uh, a financing country, but definitely, and not only in Africa, but also in Europe, could actually become a very beneficial partner to Italy, uh, funding 
or, for example, refinancing certain kind of activities which need uh, fresh blood, fresh uh, money. And uh, there is a lot of uh, initiatives uh, going on at the moment, though, for example, the, definitely some exchange has been slowing down, but still China is looking at taking over or buy major stakes uh, in other uh, uh, important uh, business, uh, businesses in Italy. Uh, never forget that now China is present uh, in uh, companies like Ansaldo, uh, Pirelli, just to say two big names, and is looking possibly to go much more into uh, transportation and automation kind of business, which is developed by Italian companies. Um, human resources in a fragmented world. Uh, new old knowledge rewind. One of the other things which can be uh, seen in a positive way during this period is that eventually people like us, people like me, people like managers of Italian companies which have been working here during this period can become again the bearer of uh, the best knowledge on how to react uh, after the crisis. Uh, if you ask me what we did here and how we behaved and we still behave, what it means to have a social distance or what does it mean to be very fast in finding, for example, alternative uh, suppliers when you discover that you cannot rely upon your traditional supply chain anymore. Well, I would say that the managers of companies present in China can be really very useful for their headquarters in Italy or other countries of Europe to show what uh, it has been done by us here for the last three months. The crisis of the virus came here before and so we had one and a half month uh, time more to think on how to reshape the business. And uh, a lot of companies became very, very dynamic in finding the possibility of, for example, finding new suppliers. A lot of companies, for example, have uh, uh, been straining their supply chain because the technology that they were importing was coming from their headquarters. Some companies in Italy have been closed for almost one and a half months. So in these cases, for example, some of the uh, most advanced technological uh, advanced companies who are present here, I speak about, for example, the automation business, or the mechanical and the traction business, have uh, had all of a sudden the lack of uh, uh, components, basic and key components coming from Italy. They had to find alternative ways to outsource. And uh, they chose two, two possible ways to go into China, so to look for, for example, uh, local suppliers which could substitute what they couldn't get from Italy, or to act uh, on time before the closing time, well, when the closing time in Italy was announced, and they used uh, to stock in advance, uh, much more components and parts coming from uh, sensitive countries like Italy or Austria or Germany, in order to be able to face uh, that their needs, uh, production needs, manufacturing needs uh, for these months to come. The two methods which have been used alternative by different kinds of industries, because it's uh, definitely easier to find substitutes for certain kinds of technology, like for example, microchips, or um, softwares can be definitely be substituted with local products uh, and much more complicated instead if to, uh, to substitute different types of components which are highly technological sensitive. And uh, in other industries, for example, these two methods have been used by uh, Italian companies during this last three months. So we have uh, companies which have been doing uh, stocking and piling up in their uh, inventory a uh, good amount of components in order to be able to serve their clients here, or uh, they have been very fast uh, into finding alternative uh, suppliers in uh, the area, in the areas where, for example, business was going on or companies are not closing. Let's look at what, uh, for example, um, China will come out with in the future uh, uh, with reg re regards to Belt and Road. Belt and Road Initiative post 
important because uh, mobility and uh, both boundaries and borders are part uh, of Belt and Road, which means the uh, Belt and Road uh, Initiative is a plan where China would uh, push and enhance possibility of moving goods and moving through, for example, rail services, trains, more roads, more airplanes. As we said, this initiative will slow down. But mobility will not slow down when it comes to supporting local governments from China in financing the initiative of OVOR, of BRI, uh, with the funds, fresh funds coming from this country. So in a way, the infrastructural hardware part will slow down, but the mobility part, the software part, and the financing part will still follow its own agenda. Made in China 2025. This is a very interesting project. Made in China 2025 has to do with Internet of Things. is a project which China three years ago uh, baptized, which will try to take China industry into uh, China 4.0 or, uh, sorry, Industry 4.0 or even much more into Internet of Things kind of uh, status or level. We have been seeing during this, this last uh, three months uh, an incredible acceleration in new technologies. Just before I started this class, I was uh, discussing with the colleagues about uh, this uh, 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 application, if I can now I will show it to you, the application which has been given automatically and used automatically starting from uh, February from, by all the citizens in China for tracking their latest uh, passage or, or let's say to, just to say where you have been for the last few uh, few months and few days. There is this uh, technology if I can open up I will show it to you which is uh, made health Anyway, uh, while I'm looking for this uh, nice thing that I cannot find yet, ah, this is all slow down. Uh, we have seen an incredible acceleration of a lot of other technology. Uh, in the last year, months of 2019, China was emphasizing, uh, for example, a new technology for the face recognition. And, uh, also, in this case, I, re I read many articles of criticism, definitely because it, you know, face recognition can be seen as a way of uh, controlling human beings, but it also can be seen as a way of controlling powers, for example, public security issues, or even to keep everybody more happy and more safe. I just want to tell you that uh, very recently, bicycles were not stolen anymore because people are so scared of being filmed when they stole a bike even during the night that eventually this kind of technology I can say was particularly benefiting people like me or who leave the bikes outside on the road every night. So this was a very, uh, this was already quite advanced but in, in th this, this technology accelerated even more during this period of crisis. First of all because obliged like we are right now to use different type of communication methods and different type also of recognition methods, uh, then we, we had to start to use applications which are intelligent applications and can tell things. Uh, I, I, I will be able eventually to show you very soon so you will see what we are talking about. Maybe, maybe not. You can see I am the more anti-technology for definition, so that's it, but something will happen for sooner or later. While it is thinking, I go ahead. So, will China be able eventually to restart again in uh, Made in China 2005, 2025? I do suppose yes. I suppose that uh, the four and a half months, which are uh, four and a half years, which have been led to, to the realization of the project, will definitely be uh, enough for China to, to take at least a good part of its uh, industry, not all the industries, 
into a very highly technological kind of state and interrelated by internet of things. For example, the possibility of controlling production or stock inventory or piling through, uh, through um, uh, softwares which which allows you to be at home, for example, and you can work from home, but you can control the factory in a completely automated way. This is what I was uh, telling you, and this is the kind of application which eventually we are, we are obliged to take with us, and then they control us with this. This tells the authorities or any type of, for example, management in uh, buildings, in blocks, in restaurants, in public areas, whether you have been living uh, for dangerous areas in the uh, most recent 15 days. Applications like this or technology applied like this will definitely be used in the future and decline possibly also to improve and efficiency and speed up the efficiency of certain industrial fields in China. Um, uh, let's see instead what will happen to the Italian companies who are here. Okay, Look, many Italian companies are here to sell the luxury goods, for example, all the companies, all the brands which are here. We can uh, Gabbana, to Max Mara, to, to Kenzo, all these uh, brands which have pre been present here for a while they will possibly uh, do much better in the second half of the year. Already data collected through our clients say that as soon as the people uh, were uh, re-allowed to go into shopping mall to, do, to buy, uh, they uh, have uh, expanded enormously uh, their capability of buying because and then all, all eventually now they are taking advantage of these and buying uh, plenty of uh, luxury goods, bags, shoes, clothes. Uh, and uh, I was told that, for example, in the last two weekends, the various uh, boutiques of goods have been packed with people queuing up to go in and, and buy. So I would say that in the luxury goods, uh, industry, possibly Italian company will do very well, especially I, will, I think that uh, uh, the second half of the year will be very significant in terms of sales revenues generated in this area. Actually, uh, uh, of their brands will possibly be equal to 70% uh, of the overall global sales all over the world. So that would be an incredible uh, amount, uh, uh, increased amount, uh, which will be generated in this country and countries in the neighboring countries like uh, South Korea or uh, Singapore and in the other countries nearby. So for the fashion and luxury, I think that Italian companies will do quite well. Let's see that in the other fields, um, other goods, other goods which are not luxury goods, but still can be, for example, uh, sold like a B2C kind of goods for the house, object of design, furniture, electrical appliances. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you what, about uh, different sectors. Also, in these fields, we forecast that uh, there will be a, a very huge uh, growth in the sales turnover, especially starting from the second half of the year. People cannot travel, so people don't travel, so they have to buy what they find locally, so possibly uh, this will benefit uh, Italian companies which were here before, and they were selling, uh, for example, other kinds of products that are not connected to fashion. Well, uh, if you were not here before, definitely it is easy to say that it will not be easy to start a new business uh, again because, uh, first of all, nobody can come into China and actually we were no more uh, traveling. We restart only at the end of the year and uh, not being able to come to China is impossible for many entrepreneurs to start new business because you don't start a business at distance. So there will not be an increase of the Italian direct investment in this country until possibly 2021. And then 2021, we will have to see how is the overall situation of the Italian industry and whether there will be remaining budgets to be used for 
China investment project. Um, as I was uh, uh, saying before, starting from 1986-87, starting from the date when uh, eventually uh, the uh, in foreign investment in China was regulated by the in this country. Uh, during the years between the year 2000 and 2008, we registered what we called eventually a golden age of China investment and uh, in, in, of Italian companies. Most part of companies present here, apart from the one with friends, are all mechanical uh, related industries. So they are companies uh, as well as uh, companies related to the auto business or auto components, mechanical components, um, textile mechanical, chemical fields and so on. So as I was saying before, some of the companies here were, were over the years completely localized. So the crisis that we've been seeing now uh, will not impact for their production very much because having localized a long time ago all the purchasing and supply chains, they will not resent so much unless uh, some of their local uh, suppliers have been uh, impacted by this crisis. But some other companies, especially the ones which have got a very high level of uh, you know, proprietary uh, kind of secretive uh, or secret technology, could be possibly impacted uh, uh, formidably because uh, Italian companies have been shut down for almost one and a half months. Uh, many companies are now uh, producing with reduced efficiency because uh, they put possibly all their stuff in uh, so-called uh, um, Casa Integrazione, which is this integration and support incentive uh, uh, system of which uh, uh, forecast, which uh, expect the Italian government to pay for 80% of the salary of the workers in uh, as I was saying before, in this month, they have found a way to substitute this uh, highly, um, uh, highly protected uh, technology, uh, substitute it with uh, maybe uh, the same technology coming from different countries. But we do know that unfortunately, uh, certain headquarters will not allow uh, their subsidiaries here to substitute key components, uh, key technologies, with locally developed maybe they will not be able to serve their subsidiary here from uh, Italy or from their quarters but maybe from, well, from other uh, countries where they are present for example most part of the mechanical companies globally present here have got also plants in the States, plants and or research center in Germany or in France. So possibly maybe the Italian part or a quarter will close down, but the, uh, uh, other, uh, the other uh, operations can uh, provide Here you can see what I just said. So the companies can um, can decide, for example, to have a part the, uh, the the ones who are part of integrated supply chain and they are even small uh, global multinational companies might eventually decide in the future to differentiate and dislocate. Uh, their supply chains in the different countries where they are. One of the, the conclusions, and I was doing, I was discussing this morning with uh, one of my clients who is into automation business, is that the, the foreseen economic system in the future of supply chain will be sort of a local, smaller, and localized supply chain for each plant of production that uh, multinational companies have. So what it means? It means that you have uh, a factory in India, it is forecastable and foreseeable that eventually you will source out uh, 
uh, to local supply, Indian local suppliers, in order to avoid blocks like the ones which are happening right now, and in order to be autonomous in your own way. Same thing for companies which are present here in China, or same for what uh, same companies which are, for example, present in the United States of America. So what we can foresee can be seen as a dislocation or a, a local uh, uh, relocation of local in, locally servicing supply chains. Other companies in, instead um, can take the certain decision of uh, relocate outside China. Why? Because, uh, because for political reasons, it could can happen, but also because possibly as Asia will still stay as one of the main uh, integrator of the, the global supply chain, the crisis of COVID has shown that the weaknesses of the system, so might decide that eventually uh, might have alternative kinds of suppliers. For example, this morning, uh, the clients were discussing about the possibility of creating parallel uh, way of supplying components in countries which are still in Asia, so not in Europe, but which can be alternative to when China is taking, for example, another pandemic. Not that I wish that uh, another pandemic comes to China, but definitely you have to consider that if in the future something similar really happen again in 10 years, you have to have a parallel way of supplying your plants, which are based here, with uh, uh, locally Asian-based uh, alternative suppliers. This could all be taking uh, companies to take a lot of uh, uh, decisions which can change continuously also their, their shape, uh, their way of thinking about the business in the future. For example, uh, moving their headquarters out of China into countries which can be seen as much more guarantor uh, for the future of, for example, a pandemic kind of risk or they are much more able uh, to control uh, similar kind of crisis, like, for example, moving out uh, head offices in South Korea or in Singapore and to keep manufacturing operations here with possibly uh, local and parallel different kind of suppliers and supply chain, which can be activated in the moment in which in one of these countries there is a, a crisis like this. Um, Yeah, yeah. We have yeah. only five minutes more. Okay. And then mm -hmm. uh, I will try to open uh, um, some uh, question and um, discussion okay. with you. Yeah. Anyway, I think that uh, I can close in five minutes saying that uh, definitely what we have been seeing during these last three months is that companies now need to think with a very much higher uh, level of flexibility. And flexibility uh, is due to the fact that as mobility is now under danger, has been impacted a lot, you have to be able to transform your mobility into being flexible and adapt yourself into finding your solutions. So companies will find solutions in a different way, as we we're saying, not only because their structure is different, because they are, some of them are bigger, some of them are more global, some of them are multi, more multinational, some of them are instead very big size, so they can structure themselves into different countries. But definitely, this, uh, this crisis will be seen as a, a real opportunity to reshape the model of business. Uh, many of my clients, which are present here, have been finding alternatives, and they've been thinking continuously on which alternatives to create. I think that through also their experience, also their headquarters in Italy or in France or in Europe can learn from this experience and possibly reshape in a new model. Uh, I think that uh, I, I'd rather have questions to, uh, to answer than not uh, just going ahead. If people want to ask questions, I like it more. Please, I, I, I leave the time to uh, question and answers. Thank you. Thank you, Cristiana. Thanks a lot. Um, so, any questions, please? <clears throat> yes, actually, I have a question. Mm. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think that a future partnership between China and Europe will make more China like Europe or more Europe like China? <laughs> this is a nice question. I think that nobody will change anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think that Europe will be Europe and China will stay as China. But uh, I think that uh, definitely the relationship will improve a lot, also in consideration of the strained kind of uh, relationship which is uh, now uh, uh, between the uh, United States of America and the uh, People's Republic of China. I think that the Chinese, China will uh, help uh, a lot of uh, businesses in Europe and uh, Europe will get mo more back to China with a lot of trust more and make new investments. Actually at the moment uh, the European Union is negotiating with China for new possibilities of developing business in common. Not last, as I was saying, uh, the communication industry with the 5G technology, for example, which uh, is not, while in the States, uh, in a very goofy manner, has been uh, sort of uh, crushed by uh, Mr. Trump, uh, in Europe has been seen, has been welcomed by uh, a lot of communication companies. So China will be China, Europe will be Europe, but definitely much more hand in hand. That's my, my, my vision. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, other question, students? <clears throat> so Christiana, can, uh, can you give us some, uh, uh, directly to the students, some suggestion for their future connected with uh, China and uh, connected with the Euro experience. So <clears throat> uh, we are collecting, uh, you know, some experience from speakers, uh, especially for uh, the future career of our, our students. <clears throat> I think that I will tell the students the same thing that I'm telling my daughters. I will say to them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay where you are and take advantage as much as possible, even of immobility. Um, but as we were discussing before, to be immobile gives you, at the moment, the possibility to look around you in a much more deeper way and uh, gives you the possibility to find a new instrument to take advantage of uh, uh, the situation where it is. So, what it will be in the future? Uh, for students who are 23, 24 years old and you are finishing, you are doing this uh, course and you are very specialized and highly uh, technologically highly competent and well educated. I would say that a good experience in a developed country in uh, for example in one of the European countries or even in the United States of America will open up your brain and will put you on the, on the, in the state of art of uh, a very developed and mature kind of economy. So I would suggest you do a first period of work or business in one of the developed uh, um, uh, most industrialized countries in the world. After that, I think that uh, China will become more and more a challenging uh, kind of country and uh, its industrial background will become stronger and stronger if eventually made in China 2025 will really be real and definitely we will talk about an industry here which will be highly technological. So at that point, with a little bit of more experience in our old world, in our old traditional industries, I would suggest you to come in countries like China or to challenge yourself in India or to come and try to see whether Vietnam is really, for example, the fastest growing economy in this part of the world and maybe challenge yourself with that uh, what Asia can offer you. So I would suggest uh, being very conservative, do your bones and make up your bones uh, in the old world and then run in the new world. Fantastic, Th thank you, thank you very much. Um, so um, other questions? Very silent, all the students oh. are <laughs> yeah. super silent. <laughs> Very shy, possibly. One of the things that people told me is that these Zoom rooms are, are really making people very shy. Because, because you, you sit in front of the computer, but maybe you are not, I don't know, maybe not properly dressed or something like, you know, very sporty mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So nobody really wants to show the face. So nobody wants to speak. <laughs> <coughs> Absolutely. So, 
um, we, we are starting the, the second round of uh, our uh, um, webinars today with uh, Arthur Delit. Uh, and uh, so thanks a lot, Christian. And uh, let me call Corrado, and uh, probably he would like to. <laughs> Corrado is here. I can see yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's not it's shy. A section today. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of professors, and uh... <laughs> I will yeah, also stay yeah. silent. Yeah. But I got uh, engaged in, in, in what you are showing us. What I'm showing you. Hi, you, you are well dressed, so you're also showing yourself. That's, yeah, very that, nice. that, that, that's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are you? You are in university or you're at home? I, at home, at home. At home, okay. So, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, it is uh, quite, uh, it has been a quite a challenge also for me to talk uh, behind my computer. Sometimes I feel very stupid because really I, I just look at my computer trying to find the faces I used to. I, I, you know that I'm very physical when I am in class. I like to go walking around and talking and approaching and talking to students one to one. And, but uh, this is the moment, this is the moment what we are doing. So. I am sure that in September things will go back to normal and um, I'm sure that also universities will reopen. I hope so for you guys. And uh, at the moment is what we can do anyway. Uh, the, the simple canvas I prepared for you is very simple. The notes are very simple. Some data uh, I have to thank again House of Ambrosetti because I, they are my partners in this adventure in China and um, they are always very, very very, very well informed and they have ideas and these ideas, some of them, I put in this very minor presentation uh, that uh, you can use uh, for your own uh, considerations. Anyway, take this time as the best time of your life. Doesn't matter, don't feel, and I want to tell you so students, don't feel that you're wasting time, that you're losing time and that the life was not fair with you because for four months you had to stop. I think that there is a lesson to learn uh, in any kind of situations. Actually, make it precious because in the future with your kids, you will say, I was there. I lived to, to that period. And you can tell your kids and they will listen to you and they will say and they will ask you, what did you do? How did you spend your time? And you will tell them the magnificent things we are doing, like talking to each other through computer screens, and sending beautiful words to each other, maybe studying more and learning maybe a little bit more about ourselves. So consider this moment as a precious moment of your life. Don't be depressed, don't be sad. That's what I'm saying. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Cristiana. Th thank you very much. Um, okay, uh, I hope we, ca we stay in touch with you uh, and uh, Corrado, do you want to tell something more? Uh, okay, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> uh, grazie mille, Cristiana. Grazie, grazie. Thank you to everybody, and then uh, a big wish for good health, stay safe uh, from China. And here we are back to normal without masks, so you will be there very soon, also yourself. Take care of yourself, all of you. And remember, remember, don't be sad. Consider that this is a part of your life and maybe very, very precious, very important. Cherish any moment in your life, okay? Good, good. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Power. Bye. Okay, so we can take probably two or three minutes of break and then we will start with uh, Arthur Delit. <clears throat> Grazie, Cristiana. <laughs>